Lester Munson is a senior fellow, National Security Institute, and also the core head of the international practice at BGR Group. Mr. Munson is joining us from Washington, D.C. Mr. Munson, thank you for making time for us and welcome. We are looking at the third winter. Last year, a time like this, we were talking about a winter counteroffensive. How do you think that worked out for Ukraine? And looking ahead, do you think Ukraine is prepared for the third onset of winter? Well, I, I think uh, it depends on your perspective. Uh, here we are two and a half years into the war that everyone thought Russia would win in a few days. Uh, Ukraine persists uh, in large measure. It is thriving. Uh, it is doing, in the grand scheme of things, it is doing quite well in the face of this onslaught from its much larger neighbor. So. I would say we um, should be very appreciative of how well Ukraine has managed this war thus far. Could they have done better uh, at different periods? Certainly, uh, Ukraine does appear to, uh, today to have in some ways the upper hand over the Russians. It has taken Russian territory for the first time in the last couple of months. That changes the chessboard significantly, even though it's not a lot of territory in the, in the um, in the context of what Russia has taken, it does change the conversation. Also, Ukraine is now uh, able to strike further into Russian territory. It wants to be able to strike even further than that. Mm -hmm. That changes the dynamic as well. And if Ukraine can hold its ground and maybe even gain a little advantage in this coming winter through a, you know, longer range strikes, through quicker repair of its damaged infrastructure, then it's going to be in a good position to push for uh, perhaps a negotiated settlement next mm -hmm. year that sees a large part of the Russian forces withdrawn from their country. We heard there from the United States uh, Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, saying that uh, Vladimir Putin weaponized the weather last year and also the year before. Do you think he's likely to do that again? Well, they're going to try, and Russia Russia is using these missile and drone strikes to take out, as as your report noted, uh, the the energy infrastructure of Ukraine. So, it's important that Ukraine have the ability to strike at the the at the location of those attacks, which are going to be deeper inside Russia than they've been able to strike thus far, generally speaking. So, if that's this is exactly why President Zelensky is asking you know, permission and cooperation from his allies in the United States and Europe, let me shoot further into Russia so I can prevent them from destroying our energy grid, because that will make the weather a weapon. So this is exactly the issue uh, I think Secretary Blinken is talking about. And perhaps it's an indicator that the Biden administration is going to approve this request from Zelensky. Let's talk about that request and that visit. Ukrainian President Zelensky will present a victory plan to defeat Russia to President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. How do you think the Kremlin will react to this move? Because so far, they are mum about it. Well, in the past, uh, President Putin has threatened the use of nuclear weapons if attacks are made inside Russia. He has notably stopped doing that. Uh, those threats have been revealed to be uh, without any real substance. So he's going to have to change his tactics here. What can he say or do that would dissuade the Biden administration from granting this request from President Zelensky? I don't pretend to know the mind of Vladimir Putin, but he is no doubt going to come up with some new way to imply a threat against the West, mm -hmm. NATO, the Baltic states, Poland, etc., if um, if the Biden administration were to grant some of these requests from President Zelensky. Let's talk about that uh, issue with the West. Zelensky says that if the plan is backed by the West, it will have a sort of broad impact on Moscow, including a psychological one that could help compel Russian President Vladimir Putin to end the war diplomatically. Is that likely or highly unlikely to happen? Well, it's a it's a wonderful question. I think that's what everyone is asking. I think realistically, uh, Vladimir Putin cannot move into negotiations without appearing as if he is the one who has forced the hand of the other side. Uh, he is simply not in that strong of a position inside his own country. He's very worried about a coup 
from inside the Kremlin, from people who think he is not being tough enough on Ukraine. So there's going to have to be some sort of clever maneuver here to allow him to look like he is the bigger man, mm -hmm. uh, even though right now it does not appear that he is so. All right. I've been talking to Mr. Lester Munson. He's a senior fellow, National Security Institute, and also the core head of the international practice at BGR Group. Mr. Munson, thank you for talking to us today. Thank you for having me. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.